What is up, YouTube? Today, I'm going to be taking you guys through the workout that I did right before my dunk camp dunk show. So this is a deload week. So the purpose is to peak my vertical for this show and hopefully jump as high as I can. We start the workout with basically a superset that I do as a warm up before every single workout and dunk session. And the superset consists of isometrics and jump dynamic flexibility. Now, as you guys know, the purpose of isometrics is to get my knees healthy, feeling good and warmed up for the session. Isometrics kind of work like ibuprofen for your knees. You know you did them correctly if pain drops directly after doing um, a couple of sets. If pain increases, that means uh, you need to change either the intensity that you're doing it at or the isometric exercise that you are doing. The isometric that I do is a reverse Nordic. Um, it's kind of like a... Uh, manual leg extension. I am pushing my shins into the ground as I hold an object in front of me for support and kind of leverage so that I can push into the ground harder without my body moving uh, back and forth. And then jump dynamic flexibility is just kind of taking my body through some basic movements like squatting, lunging, leg swings, that sort of thing. Um, again, to just warm up my tissues and decrease the risk of injury. Um, and then after that, I kind of go into a barbell warm up and into the main uh, lifting session. Now, as you guys have seen from my channel, um, I just moved from some power and elastic work. And then I finished a cycle of max strength work, which is basically like the four to five rep range. And then I, this cycle that I'm finishing up is absolute strength, which is more in the one to three rep range. Um, the reason we did this is because my body just responds way better to max strength and absolute strength work. And having this big dunk show coming up, I wanted to be jumping as high as possible for this. Um, if you guys see me looking out to the side, this is because this is Andy's gym. If you guys don't know who Andy is, give him a follow at, at over the hill dunker on Instagram. He is the person that created Dunk Camp and is a huge part in moving the sport of dunking forward. Uh, so, yeah, huge thanks to having him um, let me work out in his home gym. And the reason I was looking to the side is because he has a TV set up uh, in there. And I basically had like dunk videos playing in the background, um, which is actually really, really motivating for, for the workout and kind of got me in the in the right mindset. Um, now. If you guys haven't uh, seen from my Instagram, I actually got hurt at the dunk camp show. So for the past three years, um, I've been dealing with this issue. Um, it was, it's been super annoying to deal with. It popped up during COVID when I was working out. I was doing uh, side squats, like deep side squats in my warm up, and I felt like a popping sensation uh, at the greater trochanter. That's like if you feel the side of your leg, um, like your femur, the upper part, there's a bone sticking out that's called the greater trochanter. Um, it basically is like a sharp pain there and it hurts. It hurts any time that I contract my quads. Um, now we basically, at first when I got that sensation, I started trying to do a lot of like hip mobility work and glute strengthening stuff that didn't work very well. And then what ended up working well was basically treating, treating it like tendinopathy, uh, which it most likely is tendinopathy just at the lateral head of the quad insertion um, and doing isos just like, for example, like knee isometrics, that uh, quad extension iso that I do at the beginning of workouts. That worked really, really well and has worked for the past uh, three years and I had it under control. Um, but when I reintroduced max strength work, um, I think I went too intense too fast. And then my sessions have been like two and a half hours long recently, which just ha has been a lot of load. So um, that upper IT band pain, I I've been calling it TFL pain this whole time. So I'm going to continue calling it that just for the sake of simplicity. Uh, but that TFL pain has been gradually getting a little worse uh, each week um, during this cycle. And then during this lift, I went really, really intense um, I went heavy on on the power cleans, heavy on the back squat, and I noticed it was pretty painful. It was around a three or four pain. Um, then during my dunk camp show, I was warming up. Uh, you know, I did the regular warm up that you see me do um, during all these sessions. 
and I felt decent. There was there was no pain. Then I started doing my baby jumps during the show. So it was me, Jay Clark, One Foot God, and Kill Gannon. We started doing like like little baby warm up jumps. And usually I will do these warm up jumps. And how I do the warm up jumps, it's like basically I start at ten percent effort and I work my way up all the way to a hundred percent effort. Um, I was working my way up to around like 40, 50% effort jumps. And then Kilgannon just like second jump of the, of the show does a head over the rim windmill. Third jump goes for a hide and seek attempt. And then we were all like, okay, I guess we're, we're starting, uh, we're starting the show. We're going to start jumping hard. So I instantly went into a hundred percent effort jumps and started feeling my TFL at like a five or six pain. Um, I was fighting off like limping uh, in between the jumps. And then on one of the jumps, I went for a crown, which max effort reverse jumps actually hurt the TFL more because the tendons going into more compression because of all all the twisting. And I just felt this popping sensation at takeoff. Like it hurt really bad. I felt like I got stabbed uh, at the TFL at the Greater Trikanter. And when I landed, I just knew it was bad. Like I just instantly went to the back, lied down on the floor, and it was excruciating pain, like really, really bad pain. I was grimacing and this pain lasted for like a solid hour. And the rest of the day was basically limping. Like I could barely walk. I couldn't go up and down stairs. The next morning, just going into a quarter squat was literally like a nine out of 10 pain. So uh, it was pretty, pretty bad. So now I'm going to be focusing on the on the rehab for that stuff. Um, but back to the to the lift at hand real quick. So right here, you can see I'm doing 225. I was really freaking stupid. And I picked up the 25s instead of the 10s. So I loaded up 285 pounds on the bar and I went and did it. Uh, as you can see here, I end up missing the rep. I thought I had 255 on the bar. And I was like, oh my God, I am feeling really bad. I can't believe I just missed 255. I'm a, uh, that's never felt that heavy before. I'm about to jump really low at this show. Then I realized I had loaded up 285 on the bar, went back, put 255 on, which was uh, what I was supposed to work up to for my daily max and luckily got it. Um, this was with no chalk. It's really cold in that basement. Um, so I was honestly pretty happy that I got that close to 285 with, uh, <laughs> my previous set being 225. Um, and then I proceeded to work up on the squats. Now during deload week, typically we have guys max, um, during deload week, but if you really want to peak your performance and just decrease the amount of fatigue that you have, uh, what I like doing is working up to around 85, 80 to 85% of my max for a max single and then stopping there. Um, it's kind of dangerous to max because it's really tempting to keep pushing for new maxes even after a failed rep, which can build up a lot of fatigue, which is not a good thing if you're trying to jump as high as you can. Um, so yeah, worked up to about 80 to 85% of my max on, on both of those lifts back to the injury that I am facing. So it is now five days. So this workout was on Wednesday. I took two days off and then I hit my my dunk show on Saturday. So it's now Thursday. It's five days after the dunk show. And the TFL is actually doing way better now. Um, I can actually like deep body weight squat with about a two out of 10 pain. And I can do a body weight lunge with about a two out of 10 pain. Uh, so we're going to start doing some slow strength to address uh, those issues. I'm expecting to work my way back to being able to do drops probably in two to three weeks and then max effort jumping based on, on how I've recovered in the past. Probably it'll be about two months. Um, mentally, I'm honestly doing pretty well. This isn't my first big injury. I've had massive quad pulls, uh, really bad ankle sprains that have respectively had me out for like two to three months. So I know how this type of thing goes. There's no point in being depressed or stressed over injuries because it does absolutely nothing uh, to help out with, uh, with training, right? So all you can do is focus on, on the current day and just take it day by day. Um, if you guys know who Alex Hormozzi is, he has a saying that I really, really like, and it's basically make the action the goal. Don't make the goal the goal, make the action the goal. So an example would be 
if your goal is to have a 50 inch vertical, for example, uh, your goal shouldn't be to get a 50 inch vertical. It should be the action that gets you to the 50 inch vertical. That should be the goal. So that would be show up to the gym every single day. And then if you show up to the gym, boom, that day is officially a, a success. Um, so that can be applied to literally like anything in life. So for example, if it's weight loss, right? Don't make losing 20 pounds the goal. Make the goal being at a caloric uh, deficit the goal and do that every single day. And that psychologically, that'll make training a lot easier to handle. Um, after the squats on this day, I finished with some band walks. Um, I didn't do a lot of accessory work on deload weeks. I like to keep accessory work to a minimum just because it's cool to have them in um, as volume. That way we can take that volume away during deload week. And then finally, I finished the workout with McGill Big 3. McGill Big 3 is really good for your back. I basically hold each exercise for a minute. So I start with Bird Dog. I hold uh, each side for 10 seconds. Uh, or actually, I think I believe I did 30 seconds on each leg. Um, then I did side plank, held that 30 seconds each side. And then uh, the McGill Curl Up for, for a minute. Uh, this is really, really good for back pain. If you have back pain, do these every single day. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Like always, you can go to thpstrength.com if you want me to coach you to jump higher. Uh, you can go on the website, watch the video on there, and then fill out a form. The form is to see if you'd be a good fit for, for the coaching. After you fill out the form, you can schedule a call with us, and it'll be basically a call to game plan, uh, to make a game plan for your training and yeah customize the workouts for you so if you're interested in doing all that get coached by me and john uh go to thpstrength.com uh make sure to like the video guys leave a comment i usually get to almost every single comment on youtube videos so leave a comment subscribe if you haven't and i'll catch you guys next time peace out